Today we're going to talk about batteries. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going. No, not those type of batteries. We're talking about lithium polymer batteries, aka LiPo batteries. I'm going to go over all the specs you need to know about LiPo batteries and how to buy the correct ones for your drone and how to store them and how to charge them. And since this isn't the most exciting topic in FPV drone history, let's make this a little fun and destroy a couple while we're at it. But first, let's go over the specs. Battery fact. Did you know the name of the man that invented the very first battery was called Ulysses S. Battery? <laughs> nah, I'm just fucking with you. That wasn't his name. That's not his name at all. His real name was Alessandro Volta. It's a pretty badass name. Kind of sounds like the lead singer of a heavy metal band or something. First off, the most important thing to know and learn about a battery is its cell count. LiPos usually range from 1S to 6S. All this number and lettering means is the cell count for each battery. Each number counting up from 1 to 6 just means how many cells the battery has. Why they chose an S instead of a C for cell count, I'll never know, but that's what we got. And for example, I have three drones that are 6S and two drones that are 4S. Taking a closer look at their batteries, you'll see the four cells and six cells in each. Both of these batteries, 4S and 6S, work the same even though having a different cell count. Multiple cell batteries work in series, which means every cell evenly draws the same amount of power for the drone to use while flying and when charging. From 1S to 6S, the more cells, the more power you have. My four cell battery pulling from four cells at once is not gonna have as much power as my six cell battery pulling from six cells at once. So your tiny whoop drones will usually have a 1S LiPo, while most five inch drones will have a four to six cell depending on the motors. And the KV to cell count we'll save for another video. But if you have any questions about this subject before then, just shoot the question down in the comments with a sub and a like and we'll get you in the right direction. So let's go over all the specs on the side of the battery. And we'll start with the MAH abbreviation. This abbreviation is for milliamp hours and this basically is a unit for how much charge the battery can store or how big the gas tank is. This 1100 milliamp hour is smaller than this 1300 milliamp hour, thus giving it more space to store more power. And beside the milliamp hour is the C rating. This is a measurement of how fast the battery can charge and discharge power. So the higher the C rating, the more power the drone can pull from the battery in high throttle maneuvers. And the higher this rating is will determine how quickly and safely you can charge and discharge power from the battery. So those are the three things you look for when buying a battery. The cell count, the milliamp hours, and the C rating. Now let's dive into all three of these to see how they work together to charge and discharge the battery safely. So LiPo batteries, unlike household batteries, are A, rechargeable, and B, not to be completely drained of power. Household batteries, you just use them till you're dead and then you just toss them out. LiPos, on the other hand, always have to have a little bit of juice in them or they'll be permanently damaged and not be able to hold a charge anymore. It's recommended when flying that each cell never gets below 3.5 volts. Past this voltage is the point of no return and can permanently damage the battery's capacity to hold a charge anymore. And when you fly, you'll see this voltage drop below this number the closer you get to it when really pressing on the throttle when flying. But don't worry, you'll see when you ease up on the throttle, it'll start coming up above 3.5 volts again. You'll have to fly the battery a few times to find the sweet spot and know when you need to stop pushing it so it'll stay a little bit above 3.5 volts when flying. So after you're done flying a battery, go hook it up to the charger and see how close you got it to 3.5 volts. Because batteries are always going to fluctuate when they're actually plugged in using the power. So you're just going to have to learn this sweet spot with experience. So on the other hand, when a battery is fully charged, it is fully charged at 4.2 volts. This is the max capacity for the most part. And when you're done flying and the battery's not being used, all LiPo batteries should be stored at 3.8 volts per cell. So whenever you're going to fly, try not to have them fully charged at 4.2 volts or after you fly sitting at 3.5 volts for more than 24 to 36 hours. Everything else out of this window from a fully charged battery to a fully drained battery after flying should be brought and stored to 3.8 volts to keep the life of your battery lasting as long as possible. If you do this with the life of your battery, it can last for a year or more instead of just a few months. And when you don't properly store a battery at 3.8 volts and let it sit around fully drained or fully charged, they'll begin to die faster when you fly with them. And when they start to degrade, they're known to start swelling as well. And we'll go over these dangers of swelling and what happens to a battery when it starts to degrade whenever we destroy one here in a little bit. 
Not sure if you noticed when I described on how to charge each cell when charging and storing a battery. The reason I explained it this way is because when you're using any LiPo battery bigger than a 1S, you have to start multiplying the voltage by the amount of cells you have in the battery. So here's a breakdown for this. And for this example, we use my 4S battery. Fully discharged battery cell is at 3.5 volts. For a 4S, you would do 3.5 volts times 4 cells. This would equal 14 volts. And for a full charge at 4.2 volts per cell, you would do 4.2 times 4 cells, and this would equal 16.8 volts for a 4S battery. And with storing a 4S battery at 3.8 volts, that breakdown would be 3.8 volts times 4 cells equals 15.2 volts. And for my 6S battery, this is the formula you'll use with this or any battery of multiple cells. Just depending on how many cells it has, just multiplying that voltage by the amount of cells you have will give you the total voltage of the battery and where you want that voltage to be at. And it's not like you have to input this voltage into the battery charger every time you charge the battery. It usually will automatically do it or just show it to you on the display. But this voltage count is on the side of your battery and it's in your goggle display when flying. Let's use all this information and put it together and see how it works when charging a battery correctly without damaging it. So the charger I use, I've had it for three years and I like it so much I bought another one to be able to charge multiple batteries at once. I'm impatient. I'll leave a link in the description below where you can easily pick one of these up from Amazon for under $100. Now you'll see when you first turn the charger on, if you press the left and right buttons, you can scroll through the charger settings. Here you'll see LiPo charge and storage charge. These are the two we'll be learning about today and really the only ones you'll mess with other than the fast charge if necessary. Now let's set it on LiPo charge for obvious reasons. Now we have to make sure we have the right cell count picked and we'll start with the 4S battery and set the cell count to four. Now while we're on the subject of cell count, if you look at your LiPo battery, you'll see this wire hanging off the side and this is called the battery lead. If you count the wires on this 4S battery, it has five little wires that lead to this little plug. It has one wire for each cell plus a ground. And when looking at my 6S batteries, there are seven wires. And any battery with multiple cells will have a battery lead like this. One wire per cell plus a ground. So we talked about the battery lead. Now on all my batteries, I have an XT60 connector. Most drones from a 3S and up will usually have an XT60 or XT30 connector. The 30 being a little bit smaller gauge, but it's still shaped the same as the XT60. But all of my drones are fitted with the XT60 connector just to keep it simple. So we'll plug our XT60 into the charger first, then we'll plug our battery lead in second. Here you'll see why you have a battery lead when you start to charge. But there's still one more piece of info we need to figure out in order to charge the battery safely. And that's the amount of amps to charge the battery at. Here's an explanation of how to do this. The C rating is a multiplier that dictates the charge. You can figure out the maximum theoretical discharge by multiplying the C rating by the milliamp capacity. For example, 120 C rating with a 1300 milliamp hour LiPo can output 120 times 1.3 equals 1.56 amps. Basically, whatever the milliamp hour is, you're going to move a decimal over to the right from the first number and then times it by the C rating. And in this case, it's about 1.5 amps. So now using this equation, let's go over to the charger and input that. Now you'll see though, if you scroll through the amperage, it goes much higher than that. And you might be asking, hey John, why can't we just crank up the amperage and charge it faster? Let's say this cup is our 1300 milliamp hour battery and this pitcher is our charger when we set the amp rating to the specified amount of 1.5 and start charging. We see the amount of power though taking longer to fill the battery is smoothly going in with no problems. Now let's say we get cocky and crank that sucker up to 3 to 4 amps. It's getting power quickly and you can go fly faster but the chance of something going wrong goes up exponentially and the chance of damage in the battery increases. And it's not a question of if it will damage it, but when it will. And this hobby can get pricey and repairs are inevitable. So if you can make something last with a little bit of TLC, I encourage you to do that. And if for some reason there's a problem with your balance lead and the charger is not charging the battery correctly and you don't have an eye on the charger the entire time you're charging it, things could go wrong very quickly. And you'll see that when we destroy a few batteries here in a little bit. So now we have the correct battery settings the correct cell count, and the safest amp rating to charge the battery. So once it's charging, if you hit the right button again, 
you'll see the cell count pop up on the display screen on the charger. The battery lead is giving the charger this information and it's making sure each cell is charging correctly and evenly with the others. This is a good thing to check every time you start a charge to make sure all the cells are close and even while starting to charge. Another trick is to turn the charger on and just plug the battery in and the battery lead. If you do this for a minute before you start charging, it can start to help balance out the cells if they're off a little bit. Now you may be thinking if you have multiple batteries and this one charger, that it's gonna take forever to charge all your batteries, especially with the correct amp rating. But there is an adapter you can buy to speed up this charging process. This is a LiPo charging adapter balance board. This makes it so you can plug in and charge six batteries at a time. But you need to make sure all the batteries that you're plugging into this have a very similar milliamp hour and C rating. If they're not just about basically identical, then you need to charge them separately or buy another charger where you can charge different spec batteries at the same time. And this is something to keep in mind when purchasing batteries in the future. So let's take these 6S batteries for example and say we want to charge all five of them at once. We would figure out the milliamp hours with the C rating to get the safest charge. But now we have to multiply the C rating by the amount of batteries we're trying to charge. Because the balance board is going to split the amperage evenly between all four batteries, so each battery needs the correct amount applied to the amp rating, so they'll all get the correct amount of juice while charging at the same time. Again, I'm going to plug all the batteries in and turn the charger on and let them balance out before starting the charger. And that, my patient friends, is how to charge batteries the safest and correct way possible. All right, we are through the learning part of this video. Now, let's catch some batteries on fire outside and see why it's so important to treat these lipers with care and supervision whenever you use them. I'm sure you've seen videos of people frying turkeys during the holiday season that end in disaster or a Christmas tree that goes up in flames. And you think to that person in the video, you dumbass. Well, not to scare you, but you can have something very similar happen with LiPo batteries if you're not careful. And what we're going to do is see the difference between a fully charged and stored battery controlled fire in my backyard. And look, this has been planned out carefully and controlled, so do not try this at home. So here's a very old 6S battery I have that was not charged with care and only lasted about six months. And here's another one treated the same way. It is at a full charge. Now let's see what happens when a LiPo battery is punctured. First, we'll puncture the one at 3.8 volts. Now we'll puncture the one at a full charge at 4.2 volts. So you can see once a cell is ruptured, it's going to go into flames one way or the other. The more charge it has, the bigger the flame. So not only is it good for the life of your battery to keep it at storage voltage when you're not using it, it's actually safer for your house too. And if you ever see one of your batteries start to swell, it's time to retire it and get a new one. It's not worth charging it or keeping it in your house if this can happen to a battery once it's ruptured. These LiPo batteries don't need any oxygen to ignite. Everything you saw that just combusted ignites with the internal gases stored that make up the battery's composition. That's the same combustion you would see underwater or in an atmosphere with zero oxygen. So always take these LiPos seriously. And if possible, find a place to recycle them when you're done with it. And until the next video where we're going to discuss everything you need to buy and have to build your very first drone and all the hidden costs it takes to get and keep a drone in the air. So be safe and keep flying.